Meow, 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 meow. Everybody, I'm Cantonese Cat. Hey everyone, Cantonese Cat here. This is a monthly chart with Tesla. Last time I checked, I don't think that there are any signs that are going bankrupt. I think that the biggest bearish argument right now is valuation. PE um, is just way too high. It's not justifiable. The company hasn't been growing well. I think it's uh, there's a lot of you know recency buys, a lot of fear, a lot of scares. I think argument of valuation is a healthy one, and it's healthy to have more bears than bulls during a correctional market, which Tesla is in right now. You actually want to have a lot of criticisms coming in. This is actually healthy for the stock. Whether or not the valuation arguments are correct, I don't know. I mean, overall, they are profitable. If you look at the year-to-year -year trend, not necessarily from a quarter to quarter type manner. They are growing exponentially. They've been growing exponentially. Their business model has been sound. The demand is cyclical just because they're in a cyclical industry, which is the EV industry for now. They are going to be cyclical and they're going to be good times. They're going to be bad, bad times. If you evaluate a company based on its bad times when their business model is actually quite strong, they have new products, their brand is exciting. You can always make valuation arguments. Whether or not Tesla is going to come down to your ID valuation, that's a completely different story. I think that if you look at human psychology, you look at the price for Tesla since its inception, it's just like music notes on a staff, right? Sometimes it plays the middle notes, sometimes it plays the high notes. And when price goes nowhere for about six years, sometimes what was the high note can end up being a low note over here. And next thing you know, you can plan on playing some high notes over here in the next cycle and slowly becoming the low notes, right? And this happens over and over again for a lot of growth companies, for a lot of assets that keep growing. You're going to see this over and over again because that's what it does. Human psychology swings both ways, right? Now, this doesn't apply to things that are not cyclical. This doesn't apply to things that are just gonna go down to zero because their underlying fundamentals are just so terrible because their balance sheet is just so bad because their business model is just deteriorating. That does not apply, right? But when it comes to something that has a future, that has new products, that has new um, potential revenue sources that it can grow into, and that we might still be at an earlier stage in terms of adaptation of electric vehicles, even though demand goes through cyclical cycles, which are completely understandable. There is a chance that Tesla could just be playing the lower notes right now, depending on how low it wants to know it wants to go. I think most likely we end up having a very important local bottom here in the 140s. I don't think we're gonna go down a lot further to play some of the lower notes down here. In the 100 again, some people are saying think that we're going to go down to like the 60. I, I, I don't know whether or not that's going to happen. Now, there are a lot of reasons as to why I think that is the case. But regardless, I think this is probably it. And we're probably going to end up ranging sideways, play some of the lower notes for maybe a few months or so before potentially things get heated up again to go play some of the higher notes again. It's a cyclical business, it's a cyclical stock. That's what it does. And I do want to show you that because of human psychology, you're going to end up seeing a lot of these different fractals that could play out over and over again between different cycles. And I drew this fractal here really a few months ago. It looks like it's been playing out pretty well, bounced from the bottom of this trend line over here. It, what Tesla's doing right now is just like what it's doing over here from 2017, 2019, it's just stuck in a range. And it's been stuck in a range right here for about a whole year. It does look like it's just been going downwards, but really, really does is really just been stuck in the range. When it's being stuck in the range, momentum indicators can get reset, and you, it's going to look like the wells have you know really kind of exiting until they don't. Right? You you're really going to look like whenever you're going to have a lot of things to kind of really heat up over here, and it can change all of a sudden from having a lot of retail and a lot of having like very little wells. It can change in the matter of just a few weeks. Right now, we've been having a downtrend, and this downtrend has really been going on for about three, we're like three years now, right? And sometimes these things can change in just a snap of the finger, and it can happen from, you know, within the next few months or so. Sometimes these things happen quick when they do. 
But before they do, there are a lot of technicals that need to be reset here, unfortunately. Now, we also talk about human uh, psychology when you're talking about, you know, you know, the cyclical nature of this business. You also want to take into consideration of what the human psychology is, whether or not it can be drawn out in these different patterns, right? Well, there's this alien wave theory kind of thing, if you believe in that kind of stuff, which I actually do. It actually makes a whole lot of sense. I don't think that alien wave theory is something of like an absolute kind of thing, but I do think that it does help with us kind of interpreting in terms of what the market is doing. Generally, the market goes through waves, and these waves on the uptrend in, in the speculative asset is going to keep growing. They generally go through five waves on the way up and it generally goes through three waves on the way down right and i just keep seeing this happening over and over again for for tesla sorry this is probably not the right way to do it i keep seeing it over and over again in tesla and what tesla has really been doing is it's been making these perfect waves on the lower time frame and currently looks like it's getting set up for a very very similar morphology in a higher time frame. I'm just going to go ahead and show you in terms of what I'm seeing over here. It's been making five waves up here during this first four years on its inception. And it's been making a three wave down around here and since then it's been making very powerful five waves up here and it's just been making a three wave down here and currently I think we're getting started and getting us ready for the next potential cycle, which is probably going to end up having about five waves or so. I think this is wave one over here, and we just finished it wave two. Wave three is generally the most powerful one, and it can end up potentially even hitting potentially four figures. And then wave four is going to be a corrected move, and wave five is generally going to end up finishing the cycle in a little bit of a, of a lesser move. So this could potentially happen over the next three years or five years or so based on what I'm seeing. And in general, when you're looking at an alien wave, you can see these sub waves, right? One, two, three, four, five, A, B, C correction. One, two, three, four, five, A, B, C corrections. One, two, three, four, five, right? Three is generally the longest wave in terms of a bull market. And you're really seeing really throughout the entire wave. This over here is a greater wave one, greater wave two, greater wave three, greater wave four, and greater wave five, right? After that, you might have a little bit of a very serious correction over here, potentially three or five years out, but you're really seeing a continuation of this very, very nice trend over here where it's going through this necessary correction on its way up. And right now we might be getting ready for, potentially for a pretty powerful move up. Now it doesn't always have to play out. It could be a few months out from there, right? We can have it going sideways for a little bit longer before going up. And wave three doesn't always have to go up to four digits. It can go up a lot lower or it can go up a lot higher. There's absolutely no certainty when it comes to elite wave theory. You basically just try and speculate what future price action is going to be, right? And it'd be important once price goes above the previous all time high here, 414, then you're talking about price exploration. Now, when you're talking about price exploration, it's funny because there's somebody that I know who really doesn't believe in price exploration. Well, there's somebody I know that's a way to think about Tesla, to look at Tesla's chart and actually be able to give you some price targets and telling you that everything is predetermined rather than just guessing that it's exploring price. I want to kind of show you the clip here. I had an interview with the great Maspi. His handle on X is MattHughes13. And he has a lot of really wonderful charts here. He's a specialist in GAN theory. I want to let you hear what he has to say. Like Bitcoin and, and Tesla, they have so many similarities. It's kind of crazy. Um, cycle top right here, orange mm -hmm. line. Yeah. And that next cycle top, blue line. Yeah. And the next cycle top is at 2,800 up here. But do you All think right. it's going to end up doing a very similar thing from like 2017 to 2019 again? Um, based on yeah. just how symmetry, like what, what are your thoughts on another painful two or three years <laughs> of Tesla? 
Yeah, well, if it's anything like this, this yeah. is not a good scenario because we saw a break above, but it was yeah. just a fake out only re to retest these levels, right? Yeah. And that happened December of 2016 and then just three years later. So that would not be good if it just came up and then went all the way back down to retesting. Here, right? So, but the trend is you can see the vertical lines, every mm -hmm. vertical line almost identified uh, the cycle top as well, right? So the yeah. next vertical line is uh, January of 2027, uh, which would be right up here at like 2800, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if if these vertical lines are acting as the around the, not exactly, but it's around, right? Yeah. Like around here, around here. Uh, here it was like a little bit after, right? The cycle top after the blue line going down. So it, it could be anywhere from maybe like late 2026 to maybe late 2027 for that cycle top, really. But I don't want to see this rollover happen here because that would be a bad thing. But the whole idea of using uh, these exponential charts for GAN is these levels identify the cycle top, really. So that's what I'm thinking for Tesla, 2800. But it even went a little bit below, above, so it's possible to go to like 5,000 or so, you know? But mm -hmm. we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah, it's interesting. I think last time it was almost like, hey, the time's running out. We just got to catch up and run to the next level. So we just did it in like a year oh, and a yeah. half, two years. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, like right here, just <laughs> shut up. Yeah. Yeah. So I wonder whether or not we've just been consolidating here for like, you know, two, three years and just to maybe, maybe, maybe it's slower this time, but it might get to like, you know, two, three thousand over a matter of, you know, a couple of years. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought it was pretty interesting. <laughs> I think his stuff is really fascinating. Um, feel free to check out the video. I have, I have had that video there for. Um, a few weeks ago, it was my first interview with the great Masby, and he's got really good stuff. His GAN theory is basically saying that everything is predetermined. There's not really anything that is necessarily uh, price exploration, but everything's kind of predetermined. We're just playing out in a world of simulation, if you will, based on human psychology, based on human sentiment, things like that. So I thought it was pretty fascinating. If you just look and do a you know Fibonacci sequence roughly, I mean, sure, if you do a linear, you can potentially end up hitting um, like four figures potentially, it's not unreasonable to think of a growth asset to hit some of the higher Fibonacci extension level, like 630, 960, you know, 1,200, 1,500. It's not unreasonable to expect that. If you want to look into a more of a, you know, Fibonacci on lock scale, like I, I suppose it's possible. I mean, it could hit um, potentially 4,400 up here over the next cycle and just kind of shot above the, the um, horizontal zone that, you know, uh, Matt was talking about. There's always that possibility, but, you know, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily count on it, but when irrationality comes in, it can really be irrational going either way, right? So that's just something you kind of think about here. Now, I do think that right now, if this is really wave one and this is wave two, there's a lot of disbelief over here in terms of what Tesla could do. And um, it's actually not a bad place to be if you're a bull. And if you don't mind accumulating, you don't mind it going sideways to be a little bit more painful, it's actually not a bad spot to be, to be completely honest. I do want to show a couple of things here that I found to be very, very interesting. Something to pay attention to is if you put the Bollinger Band, and I like to use the Bollinger Band here a lot. If you put the Bollinger Band, what you've been really seeing here during these kind of parabolic moves going up these wave threes of fives, on the way up, you're going to see that these are going to end up expanding the Bollinger Band like crazy, both upwards and downwards, right? And you're going to see that whenever you have a Bollinger Band expansion, you're fine. Like, price just keeps on going up because Bollinger Band keeps on expanding, right? And whenever you have been having the 20 month moving average, you're getting a little bit more exhausted. And the upper Bollinger Band, you're getting a little bit exhausted. You can see the low Bollinger Band, like it went all the way down to the negatives, right? And really, whenever it starts coming up, like again, it starts really coming around June of 2014 over here, right? Around June 2014, what's happening is really getting pretty near to the top, right? Not quite to the top, but it's getting pretty near the top. You see that whenever it starts coming back here on the monthly, and whenever it starts going, getting back about zero over here, that may be time to get concerned about. That might be time to 
really kind of exit if you want to try to avoid the um, loss of opportunity cost, if you will, right? Um, yeah, so th that's kind of interesting, right? Same thing here during this particular cycle here, the last cycle, you can see Bollinger Band significantly expanded all the way down to the negative, right? And really, whenever you start having Bollinger Band coming back out again, and you're really talking about August of 2021, from August of 2021 to September 2021, you're really talking about you're not that far from the top, maybe another couple of months from the top, right? So you, when you, whenever you have this big, giant Bollinger Band expansion, with the lower Bollinger Bands really starting to come back out here, it really is starting to signify this trend is exhausting here on the monthly chart. And that might be a time, potentially, if this happens again, if this pattern happens again, that might be a time to consider potentially reducing your leverage or exiting position, depending on whether or not you're a trader or an investor, based on what you're seeing here in the last two cycles. Again, this is not financial advice, it's just what I'm giving you, like an observation that I'm making here based on just looking at it. Another thing is, if we kind of zoom out here a little bit, and I see something very, very interesting here, which is the three month chart here. With the three month chart, you are really seeing that the Bollinger Band is starting to contract again. Now, I don't know where we're getting another like two year, three years of sideways over here, like we did with the Bollinger Band contraction. The I guess the only big difference over here and here is that. The 20 month moving average is still, you know, very, very, you know, nicely pointing up here. And we did kind of dip below it twice already. So I'm not sure whether or not we need to dip below it again and contract the Bollinger Band this much again before another big move, right? I'm just not sure whether or not that's necessarily going to happen. I think this over here actually looks a little bit more in similar morphology to this over here. But you're seeing that right now is probably just been going sideways for about three years. And because of that, Bollinger Band, lower Bollinger Band is starting to come back. We'll see what happens when Bollinger Band ends up contracting. And it might be, you know, it might end up precipitating a bigger move up over the next, you know, um, two or three years or so, potentially through four digits, somewhere up here. It's kind of what I'm seeing. I don't necessarily think we're going to have to go sideways over here for that long. But that's always a possibility, right? To for you, something for you to kind of think about. The um, consolidation is no joke when it happens, and I do want to show you, in terms of what I think moving forward. I think that we have bottomed over here. I think that we've absolutely bottomed from the cycle over here, and right now. I don't think we necessarily going to just keep going up like that because we're range bound. If you look at the Ichimoku cloud, it's going to tell you on the smaller time frame, we're making some stride, right? Like we're basically bouncing through the cloud. We're on the top part of the cloud here. But on the two day, it's going to show you a more clear picture. We're range bound right now. We're not really doing too much, unfortunately. We are kind of stuck between around 200, which is the top of the Ichimoku cloud over here, and around 160 or so, 168 would be the exact number that I would say is the bottom of the range. There's also another lower bottom of the range that's going to be around like 150. Uh, 150 over here, you can see a lot of points being touched here, a lot of points being touched here. So 150 is going to be a very, very important zone over here as support at the bottom of the range. So I'm saying the top of the range is probably 200, bottom of the range is probably around um, 168 to 180, somewhere around there. The conversion line in multiple time frames around 168, right? This is another example of 168 over here. We're just basically range bound between the, uh, on the weekly cloud here, range bound between the conversion line, the blue line over here, and the Kijun, the red line over here, or baseline over here, and the bottom of the cloud, which is around 200, which is range bound around here. 200 is going to be a pretty strong resistance for multiple time frames. And if you also look at the two week chart, you know, we are reclaiming the conversion line, which is very important. We are reclaiming the conversion line, which is very important to establish a bull trend, trying to make some higher lows here before pushing up higher. But during this process, it might take time. Like it's just range bound right now from multiple time frame on a two week time frame. Two week actually tells you a very good story in terms of what Tesla has been doing this cycle. Back tested the cloud, bounced, unable to bounce any further because it got rejected over here by the kitchen or the baseline. 
end up pushing through underneath the cloud and went back up, got rejected, found support here on the Tenkin order conversion line, bounced back up, trying to back test the cloud up here, rejected, 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 broke down, tried to back test the cloud here again, rejected, rejected, right? So this is a very, very powerful resistance up here that's been going on for years now. And I think most likely on this two-week chart, it's probably going to range bound between 168 to 150 and to 200 up top here for maybe quite some time, maybe even for a couple of months or longer before breaking out, before going higher. That's kind of what I'm seeing. 168 is going to be a very important zone and 150 is going to be a very important zone. So what we're really looking at, another thing to, to show, to illustrate as, as to why I think that is, is to look at the bull market support band, which incorporates the 20 week moving average, um, 20 week SMA and 21 EMA. What you're seeing here is, I think we're going through a very similar phase over here as we are over here. The bull market support band went from negative to starting to flatten out here a little bit. And during this flattening process, price may end up oscillating around here for quite some time, maybe for at least a couple months before it's able to find a reversal trend to go up higher. It has a very, very nice gap close over here, but I think it's probably gonna range bound here. Nothing, um, a whole lot of nothing would probably end up happening here moving forward. Now, if you're a trader, you're probably gonna love it, you know, but if you're an investor, you should also love it because that gives you a chance to kind of buy this range up here if you believe that this is absolute bottom of the cycle, you believe that this is a very important local bottom over here, which I do. The, um, let's see here. The key um, indicator that I also want to show you here is going to be the unbalanced volume. You can see that if you look at the unbalanced volume, something very, very interesting is happening. Is that over the last six, seven, eight months or so, probably the Tesla has just been going down when the unbalanced volume has just been going up. This is a very, very nice bullish divergence. This actually means there's a lot of hidden bullish momentum that has been building here for quite some time is starting to kind of play out. I think it's probably going to end up having some more, you know, additional months or so before pushing higher for this to really completely play out. This bullish divergence between the unbalanced volume going up and price going down is seen both on the weekly time frame as well as on the monthly time frame. Like it's very, very clear. So I think this is probably gonna end up playing out at some point. And when it plays out, it's gonna be pretty powerful. I am kind of done talking about Tesla for now. I, I just wanna kind of finish up this video saying that I've never really thought of myself as an influencer. <laughs> I always thought that's a, a little bit of a weird thing. I also don't know what this thing is. I just want to, Thank you all for giving me a voice and thank you all for having a um, demand for these kinds of videos. And thank you for appreciating what I have to say and we'll go from there. I guess I'll keep making them if you guys keep on watching them. Take care. Bye.